Hey guys, welcome to ESL TV for the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne Cross Realm Qualifier for the Amateur Tournament. There's a lot to be said in terms of a title for that one. I am once again joined by Jason, kind of growing half a beard, Kaplan. It's good. It's getting there. It's not. It's not your level or Rivington's level, but you know, it's not. It's not face pubes anymore. So I'm happy. Uh. Uh, so, guys, we're here, obviously, to bring you tonight's qualifier, and it will be a pretty long one as well. Uh, I think we should start off here by bringing up the brackets once Jason's pressed F11 so that it goes full screen. Got it. That's the exact button that you needed to press. Good job, Jason. He's on top of it. So, they're the brackets. Um, actually, they all, they're all linked in the Reddit thread, which uh, I believe most of you have found out already. It's at the top of Reddit, uh, League of Legends, anyway, if not. Um, so, basically, what we've got here, then, is a double elimination system. Now, this is where it gets not complicated, but... A little bit more complicated than you'd expect, maybe. So, what we're going <laughs> to do is quarterfinal oh, stage is a best of one. Winners go through into the semifinals, which is then, of course, going to be a best of three. Now, if you win that best of three, you're qualified for the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. If you lose in either that first best of one or that first best of three, then you drop down here into our little lower bracket where they'll play best of one games in round 4A, best of one in round 4B, and then the final game here, round 2A, will be a best of three. So basically all you need to have in your mind is if you want to go to Intel Extreme Masters Cologne, you have to win a best of three. And also try not to lose. That'd be the easiest way. Trying not to lose yeah. is also a very, very <laughs> important thing to do. I mean, if you're winning, then you're naturally not losing either. Uh, so our first game of the day is going to be Copenhagen Wolves versus TCM, a matchup which we've just become so very familiar with over the over the course of this last year. Um, obviously, had a few little changes going up, in, especially in the Copenhagen Wolves lineup. Yeah, I mean, we saw Reckless go to Fnatic. I mean, everyone knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Shook ended up leaving as well. Um, but TCM, exact same lineup they came in with in Tenerife, uh, which they actually did lose to Copenhagen. Or actually, sorry, they did beat Copenhagen Wolves there. Um, but now Copenhagen Wolves, you know, with Forgiven, can he match up to what Reckless has been able to do as AD Carry? Amazing. Can he match up to what Shook was able to do in the jungle? It's really, you know, hard to tell here. But I believe both these teams are already qualified for the s spring promotion tournament coming up here soon. Yeah, uh, and that's the interesting thing, I think, about this this whole qualifier tonight. We've got SK, we've got Meet Your Makers, obviously two LCS teams that are going to be in that promotion qualifier. And we've got, I think, four other teams, maybe even three that are even qualified. Honestly, TCM, uh, Copenhagen Wolves obviously already in there. Millennium, H2K, they're teams that can get in there well, as well. The, the like, thing is, they were in it last time. Millennium, okay, not Millennium, wasn't actually in it. They lost going into the, uh, the promotion tournament, but I'm so fresh, who is the jungler for that team, was in it with TCM in the uh, summer promotion tournament where they unfortunately lost. And then H2K, uh, H2K K gaming, they had two people that are still on the roster that were playing for a Nexus in the summer promotion tournament. So a lot of teams here who've already been at that level, but there's a lot of competition here for these three slots. And so this is maybe a little bit of a look into the future. <laughs> to what's coming up there for that one. We'll have to see about that. But one thing, too, we're going to see the new SK lineup. Uh, yep. Not for the first time. We obviously cast their show match on Saturday against N Faculty, where they pretty much dominated N Faculty. I think about 23, 24 minute was, game that one was. It was pretty quick. But tonight's the first time that we're actually going to see them in a competitive environment. Uh, and as we said, the teams, the three teams that qualify uh, from tonight's qualifier will be playing at the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne in the amateur tournament, uh, where we already have some teams invited NIP are amongst them, and that'll be their first tournament with that entirely new lineup as well. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a $30,000 prize pool as well for the amateur tournament, so there's a lot of teams going up for this, but it's also a really good practice, you know, for the tournaments that are coming up. NIP trying to solidify their new rosters, same with SK, you know, uh, I believe Copenhagen Wolves still trying to do that as well. And Meet Your Makers, I don't know, that's interesting to me. They did so well in the promotion tournament. They did so well in the first two weeks uh, of L summer LCS, but then they just started to have a downfall. And mm -hmm. we were looking at it as they had a lot of time to research these teams. So they had that preparation done, but have they been able to do that yet again? And also maybe fix some problems they had in their lineup before. Well, we'll be finding out here tonight. They are in the first round playing against Avalanche Supreme, which sounds kind of like some kind of ice cream, if you ask me. Uh, but we're going to get into the picks and the bands here for our first best of one of the evening. And of course, it is TCM versus Copenhagen Wolves. TCM, they're the higher seed coming into this one. So they got choice of side and they went for the blue side. So let's give you a quick rundown of the rosters while we're here. For TCM, we have JWoww, Naruto Adult, Belgian Beast, 
Matroco and Barney D. For the Wolves, Young Buck, Amazing, Cowtard, Forgiven, and Unlimited. And as the bands start to come out there, Caitlin taken away from Forgiven, Renekton banned against Young Buck, no surprise there. Oriana taken away from Belgium Beast. And we should let you guys know, this is on the 3.12 uh, yes. patch. This is not on live. It's not on 3.13. And Jinx is not enabled for this either. So no. <laughs> You love saying her ultimate in these team fights, Joe. I, I kinda... Super Mega Death Rocket <laughs> is the best name to get out in the middle of a team fight, that's for sure. Sadly, yeah. not today. Uh, well, you know, the bands come in. Renekton, that is, that's obvious against Young Buck. That is his most, most played champion in that top lane. Oriana, you don't want Belgium Beast to play that. You don't want an Oriana just in general in a game. The Jax band, though. J Wow. Obviously, yeah, Was it's obviously targeted towards him. I'm trying to think exactly the last time I saw him play in it. Was it Gamescom? Did he actually bust out Jax a couple of times? Mm. Or was that at the Tenerife qualifiers? Yeah, it was a little bit earlier. That, I mean, JWoww was always a good Jax player. Obviously, Jax kind of fell out, but since he's come back, mm -hmm. obviously fits into the team a lot better now. Cassidy was banned out here by TCM for their final ban, and the Shivana taken away by Copenhagen Wolves. Obviously, we've been seeing more and more of Shivana recently. First pick was the Aatrox, so probably going to go over, I'm going to say, to Naruto Adoy in the jungle. Yeah, I'm actually wondering, where's the Zyra been? To Kaltard. I mean, when he was playing in the spring qualifiers, remember this, for Copenhagen Wolves, when he was with, you know, Deficio and all of them, he played Zyra, and that single-handedly helped carry them into the uh, actual LCS. Um, but yeah, the Aatrox, Naruto Adoy, likes to play really aggressive junglers. He really loves Nocturne. I remember Duke came with this guy uh, earlier on in the season, and definitely Aatrox is kind of his style. So, Elise was already locked in here for the Copenhagen Wolves, and looks like they may want to take Varus as their first pick. Obviously, Caitlyn was taken away by TCM as the first ban in this best of one game. Uh, if you're just joining us, like I said, you, uh, the, the format is a little bit funky, I'm going to call it. Like, it's a kind of adapted best of three, uh, sorry, an adapted double elimination bracket where uh, you have to win a best of three to actually go through into uh, into the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne Amateur Tournament. So TCM then up next here for the picks. What are they going to be going for? We've already got that Aatrox in. That we're thinking he's going to be for Naruto Ador in the jungle. And a Sona pickup possibly for Barney D. I'm kind of happy that we might not even see Corky Ezreal this game. For once, you know, it's, it's always been really popular lately. Oh, so he looks like he actually will be going mm. a Jarvan jungle. Uh, that is also one of his play champions. So JWoww on the Aatrox is really aggressive, kind of... It's, it's a little weird to say. It's kind of like Jax. You can jump in, obviously. You can do a little bit of slow. Obviously, you don't have your counter-strike, but that's going to be a really interesting lineup, especially with that crescendo coming in from behind. I'm really curious, though, what AD carry they want to go for against this uh, current setup that Copenhagen Wolves has, because at least jungle is really hard to deal with. Hard to deal with, especially if you get off to a good start and uh, really get things rolling <laughs> yep. there. Uh, so Thresh is going to be picking up here for Unlimited. And now uh, we'll see... How he joins with Forgiven, who, you know, Forgiven coming into this lineup, he's got some pretty big boots to fill, to be honest. We've seen how uh, Reckless really guided, I think, Copenhagen Wolves, we can say, in a lot of their great performances throughout this last year of Challenger play. And that's, that's a hard role to fill for him, for sure. But Shen, he's come through to, well, the sixth pick pretty much here in this one. And that's going to obviously go over to Young Buck in that top lane. Yeah, and... I remember he played that quite a bit as well in Cologne and in uh, Tenerife, so it's really hard to deal with. I'm actually, I'm stuck thinking about the Aatrox, though. That's what my mind's really looking at, is the fact he won't be, he won't want to be in a 1v2 lane. He, he sucks in a 1v2 lane. He wants to be 1v1 against Shen here, so if you're going to pick an AD carry, it's got to be something that's good against Vars and something that's good against Thresh. And Sona, obviously, if you get hooked by Thresh, you're very squishy early on, so you can potentially be bursted down quickly. And it looks like... A Draven, we we'll, we'll never even see him anymore. Obviously, with that change to his uh, his his Q, the little bleed damage that he has going on. Yeah, I think Cork is definitely a more probable choice here than uh, Draven, to be honest with you. Uh, obviously, Corky coming right back into the mix of things uh, since the Triforce got changed. Did get changed again somewhat, obviously, uh, taking down, uh, basically nerfing it for ranged champions here. Well, I think that Corky will get locked in, but what are they going to finish off with? Hmm. A Gragas here for the mid lane for Belgium Beast. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm look, I was thinking of what do they want to go with? And Oriana would have been a perfect setup for this combo. Obviously, you can jump in with Jarvan, Aatrox, get the ball in there, pull them together, crescendo. But a uh, Gragas, so 
you're going to keep them together, I guess, a little bit if you get the Cataclysm down right. And then when it's about to, I guess, expire, you can knock them all the way with the ultimate. Or, which we did see um, over the weekend, just how well a Grogus Barrel can separate someone on the other team and you can be able to burst them down here. But if that Fizz gets picked up by Kowtard, this is, this is really going to be interesting. Yeah, and I think it probably will be a Fizz coming in from this one. Kowtard, obviously... Uh He's probably the most experienced, I, I guess we can say if you look at uh, as LCS, obviously he was in the spring split with Copenhagen Wolves before Bjergsen, who's now not even on the former Copenhagen Wolves, now NIP team, now is in TSM. Lots of changes uh, come in already, and uh, I'm pretty sure lots of changes still to be announced in there as well. But Kautart, as I said, very experienced player, and he's going to be uh, locking in this Fizz here for the final pick for the Copenhagen Wolves. So there are the two team lineups coming into it. Youngbot getting that Shen, which is always done very well, and obviously Renekton is his real go-to champion, but every decent top laner can play a good Shen. That's just how it is. Yeah, the only difference, or the, oh no, it's not the difference. The only problem is for him is very early on against Aatrox, where if he jumps on top of him, he can actually take him down quite easily. And if Nurutador does visit that top lane or bottom lane, whichever lane they're going to be in, uh, Yumbo could be in a lot of trouble. But if you look at Copenhagen Wolves' lineup, there's not a lot of synergy between, you know, the champions. It's more about, hey, let's dive on someone and kill them. You know, with a Fizz, who can obviously uh, Playful Trickster out. You have the Shen Ultimate to save you. You have the Repel out of Elise. Um, and even in the bottom lane, you know, with the Varus Thresh, we can get in there. Thresh can tank it quite a bit and then still escape. It's really kind of what they're going for. So looking for that early game power and potentially a split push later on, I guess, with Shen if he wants to. But right now, TCM have a team fight composition. So it's going to be really tricky to see what team can get in the position they want to be in. Well, obviously, an early start for us here tonight, kicking off at 5 o'clock. We're now 12 minutes past everyone on time today. That makes <laughs> me a very, very happy Joe. For uh, now. For now. For now. Hopefully, it stays that way. Um, but, yeah, really excited to see this one. As you said before, Copenhagen Wolves and TCM, two teams that have been very much prevalent throughout the Challenger Series, uh, certainly in the second half of this year, mm -hmm. of course, um, since Copenhagen Wolves weren't Copenhagen Wolves, but Copenhagen Wolves were in the LCS in the spring split. Makes little bit of sense but you guys know what i want about from that one uh, but coming into this one who do you fancy most from it i mean it's hard to tell copenhagen wolves have obviously had those changes mm -hmm. lost two star players there's no other way around saying that in the form of shook and reckless i, I think i definitely go with tcm in this one just for the fact that they've been together for such a long time now you know tenerife even before that and you look at uh meet your makers who's still been around i think they're the longest standing team as the same five 400 years now 400 years combined yeah. and they just have a great lineup they've had this synergy where copenhagen wolves you know obviously they've been practicing with these new people but tcm the way they played against copenhagen wolves back in the day was focus reckless kill them and that's, that's pretty much about it. If you get him out of the game, you could pretty much take it. But with him gone, it allows the jungler and Rutador to visit other lanes and to really focus some other things down. So I think they're going to have the advantage here, unless Forgiven can really step up and fill some shoes. So I'm just going to change my resolution, which just... Automatically does for some reason. switched yeah. on me like a beast. So let's get into game. And once again, guys, you are on board with cameraman Joe Miller, the rubbishest cameraman in the West. Uh, but obviously, we don't quite have the... The awesomeness. Apparently, we've got no sound here as well. I think the sounds might be turned off in game. Or ah, they... yeah. Let me lock onto Jay while we're here and check that out then, or not. There it is. Oh, it's just really low. It's just really low. Okay, we'll just crank Pump it up it here. Up. Pump it up. There we go. So right now, TCM here on the start of things, going into the top side of the Copenhagen Wolves jungle. This is going to be a very, very interesting start here. Actually, funnily enough, Copenhagen Wolves doing exactly the same down on the bottom side of the map here as well. Currently, no wards spotting either team, so they're working very much blind at this point. Yeah, and I'm trying to see who's going to commit more wards to this, and currently, as you can see, we do have a regular ward down in the top side of the river, and then over for Copenhagen Wolves side, they have one down at red, and they have one down in the wraith bush. Um, so they're definitely trying to spot where Copenhagen Wolves are going, and if they stay to it, which they're actually not going to be doing, they're going to be backing away. At least they're going to know where Amazing's going to go, and they're going to be able to potentially stop that, or potentially counter gank it with Nerutador, since you have some very strong early damage champions minus Gragas. So I back off, and certainly a uh, more standard start wow. from this one. Youngbok's actually going back here. So we're going to be seeing Shen in the top lane, a duo in bottom. But to me, it looks like Sona Korki are going to take the mid lane against Fizz here. And they actually put a ward over towards Golems in the top side of the jungle because they want a spot where the top laner is or who it is. So then Aatrox or JWoww can get a better position here. But 
I'm liking that 2v1 middle, though. Fizz is just so hard to deal with. One of those champions where if he gets Snowball and he can just roll right over you. So they're going to be able to control him quite well. They're going to force in a farm under turret, which is a little bit difficult to do as Fizz. And then that means Gragas, who has, you know, really good sustain just from his abilities, um, will be in this 1v2 bottom. And he also can farm so much better than Kaltard, and that's why you're seeing them go for a lane swap as well. But in the meantime, uh, Matraco got an early advantage here just from CS and from experience. I thought you were going to say Murica then. Mur Mur Traco. America. <laughs> uh, but yeah, oh, top man. lane, as you said, JWoww against Youngbuck here, the uh, 1v1 that I think TCM was certainly looking for in this one. We can see in that mid lane uh, that Matroko here taking a bit of damage. The invade has started now onto this red buff. That's the ward that they put down earlier on. The knockup will come in here on towards Amazing, but Thresh coming across will manage to land the hook on towards Naruto Ador. But have they got the damage? Ignite goes down on towards Naruto Ador. He starts to back away. Amazing went low. Are they going to try and push through from this one? Matroko came around. A little bit late, in my opinion, to start things off. And look at this. They're going back over towards that red buff, which has now been... Wow, it was warded, but has been taken down. And TCM going everything that they've got in towards this red buff. That's going to be smited away by Naruto Ador. A nice little invade. The question now is whether they can keep their own red buff safe. Yeah, that really is, because there is a ward currently for opening Wolves on that side. But, you know, having that 2v1 mid lane, or at least, you know, the AD carrying support there, allows the support to help out the jungler to go for the red, just like we saw um, with those three words they put down. But it's a very good question. Will Amazing go down to the red buff to try to take it away? Or is he just going to, you know, pretty much give it up? And right now, with him on this map towards the top side of the jungle, he's in fact going to do that. So... He's going to be hurting in levels. Uh, Nerds Door is going to get a nice early lead against him and also kills a lot of Amazing's gank potential. Yeah, there's no chance that Amazing's going to be anywhere near that. He's just done himself those golems up top. So, red buff refresh coming in here for Naruto Dot. Take him a little bit of time. Oh. And takes that red buff away. I thought that was just Sona just coming in. Just have a cheeky red buff. Just, you know, just steal that one away. No worries. Uh, but that will be for Naruto Ador. And we'll see where he makes his presence felt. Was just spotted by this ward, which is just timed out at the same time as well. Meanwhile, Belgium Beast and Kautard here down in this bottom lane, already locking heads. Belgium Beast pretty much out of mana at this point. Does have that drone ring, obviously does get that mana back as well from his drunken rage, which is always uh, a bonus. And we'll see how long he can actually stick it out in this lane. Kautard, dangerous to go under the tower here with what Belgium Beast can throw at him, maybe. Yeah, and Belgian doesn't have a lot of mana left, so he's, he can't really do too much against him. But Kautard, I mean, he could hit him once or twice on the turret and then just back out with that playful trickster. But it's a Gragas. There's no point of doing that right now when you know you won't be able to kill him. And we did see Amazing actually try to gank middle for a second here, but he was stopped uh, easily by TCM as they walked away. And I was curious, you know, with how TCM reacted to that red buff, with sending four men there to really lock it down, would they be hurting a little bit more in the lane phase? Because, you know, Varus, forgiveness, has gotten a little bit of a CS advantage over him. He has a little bit of an experience advantage over him as well, but I'm not sure if they're going to be able to use that to their advantage when, you know, at least can't get around and help them out. We see that Java now sneaking in towards this bottom lane and can't quite get in there. Kautar actually going in aggressive here on towards Belgium Beast who goes very low. Here comes Javan flash from Kautar, but will he be able to escape? Red buff is going to be doing all the damage and that will be first blood to Naruto Ador. Nicely calculated there. First blood for TCM. Such a great bait by Belgian Beast right there to commit it to it. Not to mention he got the slow on Kautar right before the playful trickster, so he still had it on him when he got uh, down. And then Jarvan able to get in there, get the red buff slow back onto him, even with his shield to really lock that one down. It gives him a early advantage. Naruto got the kill, so he's going to be even further ahead of Amazing in the jungle. And if he can keep you know up at this, then they're going to have this game pretty much won. You see that JWoww in this top lane, 10 CS ahead of Youngbuck right now, who's got the wave underneath his tower, so he shouldn't have too much problems dealing and picking up those minions. Mid lane, let's go back to the CS there. As I said, forgiven. The replacement for Reckless in this Copenhagen Wolves team is currently ahead, albeit very slightly at just five CS a difference. Uh, but Matroko and Barney D, we've seen before what these two together can do. Obviously, we've been playing a long time uh, together at this point of the things as well. So really excited to see how this whole game pans out. But the assist for Gragas plus that first blood going over as we see Amazing coming off the lantern, but not going to be quite as spectacular as they were hoping. Yeah, and TCM just have the complete read on Copenhagen Wolves. Yet again, amazing shutdown middle uh, trying to go for that gank. And right now, it looks like they you know, could potentially go top for JWoww here, but JWoww just has full control of this lane. He's 53 or 52 CS to 43. 
And Young Buck obviously is level six now, so he can't ult somewhere if he wants to, but Kautar getting very low. Wow, going very low indeed. Belgian BC here, not taking too oh. much damage. Oh, here comes Shen. Will they be able to bait this one out? Flash on Belgian Beast. Actually, is going to get taunted up here. This should be the kill and will be the kill. It's Young Buck that secures it. And unfortunately for JOI, just wasn't in a position to stop Youngbuck from ulting away. He walked away from the lane. He had minions still there under the turret, but he wasn't in a position to stop that, you know, to knock him up with the Dark Flight. And Elise, he thought Amazie was there, potentially going in for a kill onto him, and then just overall. Coconut Wolves, fantastic play, fantastic outplay as well by Kaltar to just wait in the bush for a little bit longer. Seven and a half minute dragon coming here by the Copenhagen Wolves, and that's what happens when you only have one guy in bottom. I mean, if you lose that man in bottom, it opens up Dragon so, so quickly. Obviously, mid lane then aren't really going to be coming down. Jungler was way too far away from that one. And now we'll see. Actually, it looks like the blue buff's going to go to Naruto, though, not over towards Gragas. Yeah, I mean, Kragas is going to have a... I mean, he's, he's not going to be able to get to middle to get that, then head back down bottom. He's going to yeah. miss out on way too much. And Naruto, with that early kill, with the blue buff, it'll actually make him able to gank a lot more. Obviously, the cooldown reduction on the ultimate is going to help out quite a bit. In the meantime, though, JWoww actually going to take the first turret of the game at top lane, and that allows him to start roaming around, which he hasn't even bought yet. And he's sitting on 2,000 gold, Joe. Yeah, that's the answer, really. I mean... They lost the man in bottom because of Young Buck going down there with Stan United. They lost the dragon following that, but they were able to reply with this tower kill. That was an important one here for the whole flow of the gold in this game right now. Question is, where will JWoww go? Will he continue to push that top lane? Is he going to try and put down pressure somewhere else? Yeah, that's exactly the problem right now. That's where teams lose games. If they leave a Shen in the top lane free farming and you don't do anything with your top laner, you're not able to provide ganks, you're not able to get control of anything, then you just completely wasted that lane where you're going to have to overextend a farm up and that Shen is going to get just too tanky. I mean, look at what he has right now. He almost has that Sunfire Cape built up against JWoww, which will pretty much mitigate most of his damage. But we are seeing him, looks like he will st try to stick towards the top lane he does have a ward on him, so he will be able to extend a little bit further and stop Amazing from ganking him. So let's have a look down some of the other items here. We see for Varus, that BF sword picked up alongside a long sword and that single Doran's blade. The phage has been picked up for Matroco on Corky, as you would expect. He's headed up towards that Trinity Force. Meanwhile, top lane, as we uh, thought, JWoww is going to go back up there and keep things uh, going. I mean, if he doesn't, I was just about to say, if he doesn't push this lane out too quickly, then he should be fine to keep it where it is, but whatever. He's push it out a little bit He's further. trying to shove it into the lane, or into the turret, just so it resets, so it goes back to middle, which means uh, Young Buck's going to be overextending and allows Nutador to come in for a gank. He just has to be really careful if Elise does come up there, but right now you're seeing amazing head bottom here. He wants to go for a gank, but... There's a, currently a ward in that bush, so I don't really think he can pull anything off. No, I mean, if he gets there, Belgian Beast will spot him actually pretty late, but the fact is it's Gragas. He's pretty mobile anyway, so we'll be able to get away from that. Well, meanwhile, JWoww has pushed that wave straight back on towards uh, Young Buck's turret, and in the meantime, it's going to be stealing away the golems as he goes as well. So nice stuff here, JWoww. Proving once again why he is such a, a valued top laner, I think, throughout the team. We've seen him on various different teams doing really, really well for himself. Youngbuck, up until now, he's got that single kill from earlier on where he used the Stan United down into the bottom lane to help out Kautard. But things since that last dragon, since that last kill, have quietened off a little bit. Yeah, and right now, because of that top turret did go down and Company Wolves traded that for a dragon, you have TCM being able to push top, which allows... Oh, did you see Elise coming in? But yet again, not really able to hit anything there. But it forces Amazing to either go top lane and stop JWoww from free farming against this Shen, or to visit bottom and try to pick up a gank, where right now, Kautar's getting ganked. Wow, but he actually moved away there and missed the... Oh, there's the ultimate. I was going to say, where was the ultimate out of him? Didn't actually come until the end there. And Naruto Door is ticking away. One more tick. No, not quite. He will survive that one. Picks up a second kill there on towards Kautar, who... You know, Young Buck a little bit slow, I think, there to react to that Stan United coming in. On the top lane, we do see that JWoww's the one in trouble, but look at the damage he's done to Amazing. He's still <laughs> not actually gone down. There is his Bloodwell pop, but honestly, I'm not sure that Young Buck's going to have the damage here with that red buff as well for JWoww. He's trying to get away. The Ignite was used, though, and that will be the kill coming back for Young Buck. But I have to say credit to JWoww that he actually survived that one and picked up a kill. Uh, didn't survive, but he survived long enough to pick up the kill is <laughs> what I'm aiming for. And you saw what they had to commit for that to happen. Amazing had to go up there for it, and Young Buck almost even died to JWoww. Just imagine if JWoww had something else picked up in terms of item-wise, and res in response to that, TCM's like, all right, well, Amazing's top lane. Even though Nurtudor is very low, we can push this turret, get it for free, 
and then we can start to push in other lanes where right now the middle turret's already down to below half health here so tcm in terms of global gold are doing a fantastic job of locking that up but if they can take this dragon as well they will have a huge advantage over copenhagen wolves will they be able to right now not many wards down from either side when it comes to the dragon that's coming up in one and a half minutes time here and we can see that despite forgiven having that early cs lead a great play from Matroko. He's, he's stuck himself in that lane constantly, been trying to bully out Forgiven with those rockets, and has got himself that uh, that CS lead back at 10 right now. Uh, Kautar does actually have a lead over Belgium Beast, who was playing pretty passive, which you, you have to really do once that Fizz hits level 6 as well. Got in a needlessly large rod now, and that means Kautar currently 10 CS ahead. And it looks like Copenhagen Wolves trying to push this mid lane with thoughts probably to that dragon coming up here soon. Yeah, it's very true. 45 seconds left going on it as we see Kautar trying to head middle, but in fact does back away instead, which allows, you know, Belgian Beast to get a little bit more farm here. Not to mention he does have that one assist over Kautar currently. But JWoww now visiting middle, knowing Young Buck doesn't have his ultimate available, knowing Dragon's up really soon, it looks like they might want to go for a five-man dragon Aww. here, as you can see them warding up for it. That's a little unfortunate. <laughs> he just missed it. Pink Ward is literally just around the corner from that one. Um, unfortunate indeed. Uh, TCM obviously going to have their position uh, shown from this one. One thing that's important here, 10 seconds till Dragon. And if we look at Youngbook's ultimate, it's pretty close to coming off cooldown. That could make things a 5v4 if they wait around for this one. Dragon is up in just a couple of seconds, and we see that Shen coming down, so Youngbuck knows his ulti's not gonna be there in time. He's gonna forcefully walk down towards this dragon and see if they can contend that on that front. And he is spotted by Ward in that bush, so Naruto Dora Jimmy's sticking by to help go for this, and if they do go in for the gank, you obviously have Jaywell there to turn it around on top of that, as you still see Amazing, who just having such a tough time this game, trying to gank bottom yet again, but not yeah. even able to do that. He's been shut out so well by having such a mobile... It's weird to say mobile Gragas when he's so, you know, he's so big, but having that mobile AP champ in the bottom lane, he just can't be locked down, and Dragon hasn't even been started yet, but there's a lot of wards committed on TCM's side to go for it. Yeah, and I think they're going for it now here as well. We see that once Aatrox is there, we've got Jarvan moving down as well. Youngbuck now does have, thanks to that whole delay there that happened in middle, does have San United available. So he'll be able to come down with this one. Oh, the question the is only, is. will they be able to come in? There is the crescendo on the top side. Amazing, going to get blown back from this one. Unlimited down to half HP. Youngbuck actually joining in. Matroko is going to fall at the backside. JWoww now going to be the focus from this one. He does have, no, he doesn't have Bloodwell up and available for him. He's going to go down. Barney D's probably not getting away from this one either with Forgiven and Kautar chasing him down. And this is going to be a three for one there. Jarvan did just about get away. Narutador behind his turret. Belgian Beast, well, not really involved in that fight. He had to back away just because of the whole positioning. And that is a three for one. It would open up Dragon for them if they weren't so low. I think Copenhagen Wolves here are a little bit worried about going for that one. I went back and looked at that fight really quickly because we saw that flash crescendo come out of uh, Barney D, but Forgiven flashed it. He didn't get hit by it, and because of that, he got his ultimate off, which in the end spread to Belgian Beast. It spread to, Mat uh, spread to Matraco, so he was locked down in the middle of that fight. It spread even towards, I believe it was Jaywell, over towards the top side, and completely controlled them, which allowed Kautar to get around. It allowed Forgiveness to do so much more damage than Matraco, and it allowed them to win that fight. Very well played by them. So everyone coming back into lane now. Matraco does have that Trinity Force finished for Gragas. He has the Athene's Unholy Grail, Fizz adding the Sheen and blasting one now to that earlier needlessly large rod. Meanwhile, two men sit outside Dragon. Pink wards are down to make sure that they've got complete vision control over that. And that pink ward's going to time out here as well. So that means no vision really whatsoever around this Dragon Pit currently for TCM. And the Copenhagen Wolves have started things off. Let's see what TCM have really got to say about this one. Jarvan going to dive in there. Dragon has been taken down by the Copenhagen Wolves. And the Ruto door absolutely hammered on. There is JWoww into the middle. The barrel comes out from Gragas. Kautan trying to back away on limited going low. But the focus is going to be towards Youngbuck who flashes away. The Ignite not going to be enough there to actually finish him off and he ends with a one for zero for Copenhagen Wolves and they got Dragon they're probably going to lose this mid lane turret though and right now even after how this game began Kautard is now three two and two he's picked up so much money so many levels off of these fights right now and TCM they're trying to respond they're trying to take a second turret here but they can't do that not with Forgiven and Amazing sitting by it and overall Copenhagen Wolves even though Naruto jumped into the backside kept Amazing and Kautard locked up 
they didn't have a follow-up for that. They were just kind of spread on who to attack, and in the end, Young Buck escapes with barely any life, which shouldn't have even been a target that was being hit, and Copenhagen Wolves come out ahead. Oh, JWoww here having a look over towards Red Buff. He's going to catch Amazing. Oh, he should know that oh, the minion's attacking him. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he spotted that one happening. And was just like, well, you fight me. Thresh is off to the side here. I've got Repel. That'll be enough time for him to get in. Copenhagen Wolves managing to pick up their Red Buff as well. So they actually find themselves in the lead now in goal. In goal, 24.5 to 23.500. And... A few men backing away. Meanwhile, we see Kautard here. Going to get knocked up in that bottom lane. Will he be able to escape? There comes a Stan United. They're actually going to try and turn this one around on towards Naruto. He's trapped inside his own cat uh, cataclysm there. Belgian Beast will be able to walk away from things. But nonetheless, another great Stan United coming out from Youngbuck. And, I mean, we wouldn't expect less out of him right there. Yeah. As he was able to pull the one off. And Naruto is just... Keep going too deep. He keeps committing for these fights and in the end gets him turned around. You saw Kautard there with that Lich Bane just chunk him down. And right now, Nurtador with no magic resist cannot even go up against that. So bottom lane is pretty much a lost lane now. Kautard yeah. can roam around. He can pick up a lot of kills here. If he finishes a DFG, which I'm not sure if he's going to go for that or Zonia's as his next pickup, he can create so many kills as even JW, I don't believe, can go head to head against him. Well, this is the scary thing as well. Belgian Beast is being absolutely bullied by Youngbuck at this point of things. 148 CS for Youngbuck. He's had that time to catch up in CS that he was behind a little bit earlier on to JWoww. Obviously, 205 as well makes him very hard to deal with. Not got much magic resist in there, but honestly, he's got a lot of health. And we saw that the, the what, two-level difference that he has here over Belgian Beast. He can't really touch him. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't even need to build magic resist oh. when he only have one person go up against Jay. Wow, though, again, caught here. But does have the blood well, which is actually a big cooldown to lose here as another team fight could break out very shortly. And when you only have one, like, AP player, one AP player, AP champion as Belgian Beast is the only one who doesn't have a DFG and what into an Athenes and Holy Grail first, he's not going to have a lot of damage, period. So Youngbuck can afford to build all this health. Uh, that random ends up very shortly, and he will be so hard to deal with. As you can see right there, no damage coming out of Belgian Beast. Yeah, that was, it was the ultimate plus barrels, plus belly slam there, and Youngbuck still got more than half, or oh, around half of his health. Yeah. Off. That'll do for me. Uh, <laughs> Belgian Beast just not able, just doesn't have the damage with the Athenes to kill him. Yep, exactly. And, you know, as we saw in the beginning, we had Naruto's doing so much more in terms of ganking and providing kills for his team. But amazing in these team fights has been able to catch up to him in gold. He's only down about 200, 300 at this point. And the items he has are perfect. He has the Aegis already for his team, where Naruto doesn't really even have it just yet. And, Right now, I mean, Copenhagen Wolves, they have a very good t uh, dive composition, but now they have a pretty good team overall to fight against TCM if, if TCM can't coordinate anything. A bit of a pink war going on. Um, TCM getting the better of that one. A pink war to peace, basically, is what came out of that. Uh, exchange, nonetheless. This thing's quiet and down once again. Two minutes, though, until Dragon comes up. And with this game being so tight on gold, you'd expect that Dragon is going to be highly contested from both sides of things. Youngbuck's going to have his ultimate up uh, ready for that one, and that will leave everyone on the field uh, with an ultimate available. It's JWoww here going to get taunted by Youngbuck, who's now got two levels Look at the over damage. Him. And we can see that <laughs> half health taken away there. We saw Amazing trying to get in to offer some assistance. Well, they might even be able to do good damage to the turret here. Jarvan finally coming across to give a little bit of support. JWoww really needs it. Without that Bloodwell, he can't be too aggressive. And he did no damage to Youngbuck in that fight, as you saw him attacking away. Oh. Youngbuck has too much armor at this point. He's sitting at 209, and JWoww just doesn't have really any damage. He was even forced into a Hex Shrinker here to stay alive against Kautard. And right now, Copenhagen Wolves, they can't apply too much pressure on this turret, but it allows other lanes to really do some work here. Now, uh, they oh, keep pushing it back there. Naruto though, is spending time on this top side of things. He's currently sat at 2-2-1, two, two, like you mentioned a little bit earlier on. Let's have a look down on this bottom side now. Kautard and Belgian B still 1v1 in this lane, but Kautard is so much more powerful. He can destroy Belgian Beast here. And the thing is, because you had Copenhagen Will sent two towards the top lane with the jungler, I would ex would have expected Kautard to go in uh, 1v1 against uh, Belgian oh. right there. But even though... Corky and Sonar are going to be heading down. He should be able to survive this. Yeah, actually will get barreled there against the wall, but I don't think that's the knockback that they needed. They needed him to come closer into the team. But 
30 seconds to that dragon coming up there. That could be the play that they're looking for to secure a dragon pickup TCM, which would bring them right back into it in terms of gold. But as I said, Youngbuck, he's got his ultimate available. JWoww's Bloodwell is still on cooldown here as well. So that's not going to be available to them. We see the pink wards put down by Unlimited and the wolves here clearing out dragon perfectly right in time for the spawn. It's going to be a 5v4 unless JWoww obviously can stop Youngbuck coming in. They might not even challenge for it. They're yeah, not. TCM can't. There's just no way. They lost the last two fights over at Dragon already. There's no point going for a third and allowing Copenhagen Wolves to get an even bigger lead against you. And right now, with all these items stacking up, with TCM having a hard time of just getting anything going here, you know, Copenhagen Wolves are looking very strong. Remember, this is a best of one, though. Yeah. And the semifinals coming up after this will be a best of three for that spot into Intel Extreme Masters Cologne Amateur Tournament. And right now, both these teams are really fighting for it. And I believe... Okay, Youngbug actually not going to get hot there. <laughs> it, it, should, it doesn't really need to be that scared at this point. I mean, JWoww, he's got the Ravenous Hydra done. He's got that Hex Drinker in there as well. So his damage is actually decent. But Youngbug's got a boatload of armor and health. <laughs> like... It's decent, but not against Shen. That, yeah. That's the thing. It's good against, you know, Amazing and Cow Turner Forgiven. But that's not who he's really going up against. Cow Turner is able to burst him down so quickly in these fights. That's why you see that Hex Drinker coming in. And right now, Naritador not really able to provide any ganks anymore as JWoww just going to push the lane out. He's farming decently, but Shen is still very close behind him. Youngbuck doing a fantastic job of keeping up in that sense. And right now, it's it's honestly their game to lose. It's just up to them. When do they want to fight? When do they want to contest something? And I think they might be waiting for... Yeah, Kowtar's definitely looking for his next item before they do start to engage here. He's sitting on 2,200 gold currently. Belgian Beast knows that he's actually there. Like, it just pinged right on top of him. Then you can see the gold... As you said, a lot of gold for Kauta, but pretty much everyone up to above a thousand gold as well over for TCM. So they're going to come back with uh, decent additions to their kit. I, I really kind of hope Kauta goes for a DFG here because the burst he can put down, he will one-shot Matraco easily if he, if he lands that ult on top of him. There's nothing Matraco can do to survive that. And even JWoww is in his blood well popped right away in a fight. I was going to say he's pretty much killing anyone, right? If, when he... Uh, Goes full yeah. in onto one with that DFG in there. Actually, will be looking to go back here as well. So let's have a look at the overall picture. It's almost a 4,000 gold coming in. 3,700 at this point for the Copenhagen Wolves in the top lane. JWoww there was going to be pushed by three, but I think the whole point of this from Copenhagen Wolves, yes, a kill would be nice, but they want this tower. And Urtador is going to try, uh, try to come and save it, which he should be able to do, considering they don't have an ED carry there just yet. And with that Ravenous Hydra, Jay was able to uh, clear very quickly. But he's going to get caught here as he does jump away. But look at the damage already on top of him. Yeah. That was just from a couple of hits. Taking far too much. And as long as they keep popping that blood well, it makes TCM a lot more scared to fight in other scenarios. That was uh, Barney D just spotted by the ward crossing over. And in this bottom lane, Kaltard actually didn't go back. And he's going to go in on towards Belgium BC here. Eh, not quite as excited as I made it out, I think. Uh, but he's going to finally ulti, and there is the dive from Kautan on towards him, and that will be a kill picked up. Couple of turret hits and the ignite burning. That's not enough. Another kill for Kautan, plus another turret here for the wolves. Naruto Dor should just leave this. Oh, he's actually getting taunted here. Yeah, he's going to get taunted, and he may just end up dying from this one. He manages to slide away. Jay Wow coming in just in the nick of time to help things out, but they've lost that turret nonetheless. And the thing is, they've lost control of this game, too. They can't contest anywhere. He's right there. They couldn't do a 2v3, obviously. Um, Belgian Beast can't even 1v1 against Kautard anymore as he's just overpowering him as he picks up Azonias. And right now, between the 80 carries, it's pretty even on CS, but you see Forgiven with that Bloodthirster and that last Whisper and another BF Sword on top of that just does too much damage from a Traco to deal with. Yeah, not going to be an easy game to come back from here for TCM. But as we said, uh, if you're just joining us here, I'll give you another rundown of how this qualifier worked. It's a funky best of... No, wait. It's a funky double elimination bracket, basically. Uh, first round here will be best of one. The next round of the tournament, which is technically the upper bracket semi-final, will be a best of three. Now, if you win a best of three, you're qualified. So if you win in those semi-finals, the best of three, or if you do it down in the lower bracket, which is obviously a little bit further on, as we are going to see Kautard here going to be pushed onto by TCM, but, well, they'll just leave him after that barrel horribly missed. Yeah, I think they're hoping to hit him into the turret right there. As even Urtzer, look at the damage off Kautard. Yeah, the ultimate coming in is going to get knocked up. Amazing comes, slams down the fangs for a kill, and that will be 9-4. 
and Belgian Beast should just leave. Honestly, he should leave this one with Virus coming in as well. He can't hold on to this tower alone. He needs the rest of his teams. There's a flash in from Amazing. Didn't quite get uh, that cocoon off there, but that turret not going to last very long. That uh, is turret number four of the game. They're going to look for more Unlimited here. He's going to be the key man. Can he get the hook? Barney D coming around the corner. He's going to get sniped, but the hook was a little bit late there. I thought he was going to start teeing it up uh, as soon as he came around, but what a, a push there from Copenhagen Wolves that really started from nothing. Yeah, and it's required every single member of TCM to hold on to this turret right now. And even in that last fight, Copenhagen Wolves did get the flash on Naruto Dory. At the end of it, he actually failed his flash over that wall. So they picked that up as well. And now they're going for a turret. And remember, they still have Shen Toppin to teleport down and to ult the end to save this one. Kowtar's ultimate is up yet again, and they might even turn for a fight. I think they might do as well. Oh, Yellbuck's trying to run away, sorry. He's trying to run away from JY just so he can't ulti in here. Oh, Kautar is going to go in there. They managed to burst down Thresh, but here comes Shen. Naruto Rador is trapped at the back there, Elise, in a similar fate here, but does manage to repel into the minions. There's the ultimate out of Varus. We did see Crescendo, but that won't be enough. And that is a two for one. Only the support loss here for the Copenhagen Wolves. And JY was... Oh, Belgian oh. Beast gets caught! Manages to land, but can he finish it off? He's going to dive in, and there is Kautar being godlike. And this is a turret here. I don't think Matroko's got the damage to force him off. Uh, he's going to keep trying to rock it away, though, and the turret will go down Matroko if he ah! stays too long. He's got him free once again. Zonya's was used. JWoww now diving in. Have they got the damage? They're going to lose Varus. They may lose more as JWoww starts to chase in. Mar Matroko comes down as well. Kowtow's got his cooldowns back up. They've managed to get the blood well out. JWoww's going to come back to life. Kowtow's going to be jumped on at Youngbuck. Ah, tried the flash taunt. That didn't work out. But we've seen how he can handle JWoww here. Will he be able to kill him? No, he won't. That lifesteal, enough to keep JWoww healthy. And a bit of a crazy engagement there. Possibly sticking around a little bit too long there, the Wolves. Yeah, just a, just a little bit right there. They got there. the tower, which is what they were looking for, which... You know, it leaves that inhibitor completely open now. And the fact that they've got a Shen on the team who can just push this top lane, as we've seen before, still opens up things nicely for the Wolves. I think if Kowtar died, though, it would have been a huge win for TCM just because of the amount of money they would have gotten off of him um, from that huge yeah. killing spree that he has right now. But, I mean, you start right there. Kowtar, an ultimate lands on Belgian Beast. He commits to it, gets the kill very easily, still has his own to escape, almost has a death cap picked up now. This is getting very dangerous if it already wasn't for TCM, as Dragon even respawning right now, but no one's going for it just yet. And this is starting to get really out of control. Not good whatsoever for TCM. If oh, a team will drop down into the low bracket, I don't want to say if TCM lose, if Copenhagen Wolves lose, it's the same for them. Dropping down into that lower bracket means a, a bit of a longer way, I think we can say, into uh, the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne, uh, which, by the way, actually, I think the tickets all sold out, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, I, think I they believe did. they are, though. I think the tickets sold out in the first day, actually, for, uh, for the Intellectual Well, I mean, you got, what, so. CLG, C9 from NA for the Pro Tournament, Fnatic Gambit as well. You have NIP already qualified. Three teams from today will be qualified on top of that. And I believe we have two more coming from CIS and Turkey for their Pro Tournament. It's a lot of good teams here, and everyone probably wants to see them. Yeah, that's certainly something to look forward to. And this qualifier, we said it earlier on as well, but... Really a, a bit of a look into the future maybe for the promotion tournament because a lot of these teams are already qualified and those that aren't possibly are going to be able to uh, qualify with the next online oh, course as well. He's dead. That's a lot used against him there though. And amazing, actually stuck here inside the Cataclysm. Belgian Beast going to go in onto him, forgiven, trying to put some damage by one. Li amazing is actually going to die here. They and could it's go Matroko who's now on a killing spree. And yeah, they've, the jungler's down. They've not Shen's got bottom, Thresh though. in there. Th uh, Shen is pushing down that bottom side. He does have Stan United. So let's have a look down here towards Jungbo. He's going to get that inhibitor. The question is, will they be able to stop this Baron being done by TCM? Oh, Fizz going to get Barry D right there. He has his zonies as well. He's just trying to stop him, and they're winning this fight. They are winning this fight. This is a basically a two versus four, as we are going to now see Shen coming in. There's a double kill. They focused on towards Matroko now. He's going to Valkyrie away, but you can't Valkyrie away from the Fizz. Kowtar picks up a triple. And all of a sudden, what was looking like a great moment in the game for TCM, they just killed off two. They can turn for Baron. They've lost three men. Now they're going to be losing the Baron here. This oh. Belgian beast may be able to steal. No, he won't. Kautar's not going to let him get close oh, to that. I was going to say, his ult was up in five seconds. He potentially could have gone for it with no smite on Copenhagen Wolves side. But TCM, that seemed like a last-ditch effort for him. It's now JWA going head-to-head -head against Kautar. Yeah, he's going to use his on you, but... <laughs> <laughs> wow. That really was a bit overkill, I think. Barrel to your face. Uh, but they lose Baron and they lose that blue buff here, which 
I don't think Kowtowd really needed to do that. I think zoning him was fine. Back off would probably would have been better for the, uh, the near future. But also, I think this game is maybe a little bit too far gone either way. Yeah, he was a little bloodthirsty right there. And you see how many wars that T-Sim committed over towards that Baron and just how much it hurts that they weren't able to pick it up. And Kowtowd right now, he has a death cap. He has a Lich Bane. He has a lot of damage. As you can see, as just pointed out, smiling like, yeah, Young Buck even has an Abyssal Scepter here just to help out Kowtowd a little more and provide a little damage for him. Pretty cool stuff. That's a, a very confident... <laughs> it's like a why not? That's a, yeah, that's a confident Young Buck right now. Uh, Copenhagen Wolves actually been closed on to here, but I'm able to just walk off towards the Tribush side of things. Barney D warding over to Dragon, something that they probably need about five of at this point, maybe even ten of to bring them back into the game, honestly. Not looking strong for TCM at this stage of the day, which is uh, for a sh it's a shame if you're a TCM fan. I mean, they started off really well in this game. Yeah, they did. And I guess the real big downfall were, were those two fights of Dragon that they took and they ended up losing out on both of them. And right now, with that bottom inhibitor being open, Copenhagen Wolves are starting to head towards it here as it's pretty much free for them, especially with that Baron buff. And TCM, they're going to pretty much have to engage for a fight here. You can see that, you know, Forgiven's not really with this team. They do have wards to spot them out, but they're just not in position to pick up that kill. So here we go then. Copenhagen Wolves closing in on the first inhibitor of the game. And that's not going to last very long. Forgiven just sniping around the side there, trying to get in. Rockets coming back from Corky to try and chip them down. Unlimited actually down to about half HP from that one, but they still need to careful, be careful about him. A hook onto the right man will start things off, and the Wolves, they're going to just take this inhibitor and move off towards that mid lane, which honestly Shen can tank and probably kill on his own tanking that off. Yeah, with how strong he is currently. And it's pretty much free, or two free turrets for him. Then they can pretty much rotate towards the top side, work down that inhibitor turret while the Superman's pushing that bottom lane. And right now, TCM, they can't afford to get engaged upon. If like an ultimate, a Kowtar lands, if a Shen Taunt lands, maybe a Cocoon or even the Vars ultimate, then TCM are just going to drop like flies and they have to get this turret up. But there's nothing they can do. Yeah, minions actually strolling in there. Obviously, Greg is able to clear them out pretty quickly by now. And it's funny, since the point where we're saying, well, we said Belgian Beast doesn't really have the damage to fight Kowtard. He's, he's added a death cap in since then. That feels like half an hour ago in this game. Uh, so he's still not in an ideal position moving forward. Youngbok here is so ridiculously tanky that he just doesn't care what hits him. Uh, and he's probably just going to force them away here just from positioning. That is going to be another tower. The sixth of the game for the Copenhagen Wolves. And while they continue to push down middle right now, they have the Supermans finally down at bottom. Looks like they're just going to tank it up as well. And right now, TCM, if they want to go for a fight, they got to catch Kowtar. They have to catch with the Crescendo as it goes in right now. Yeah, Crescendo is going to go down. Barney D gets blown up or forgiven. He's going to die in there as well. JWoww actually caught up inside of that Cataclysm as well. There is Stan United on towards Kowtar. And you can see it's half of Kowtar's health there, the shield. That will end in a one for one. Explosive start to the fight. The AD carry down here for the Wolves. That's a good pickoff, but honestly, they still have the damage even without him. And it sucks because that's not the person they're looking for. Kowtard, he got caught by the crescendo, but he popped his own just right before it and actually dodged it, dodged so much damage, was able to provide a lot more in the fight to kill down Barney D. And you saw him basically chunk him down as they're still trying to commit for him here, but they're overextending. Going very, very deep from this one. Kowtard, he's just waiting for the perfect moment to come back on this one. He's not going to have his ultimate back available. There is a lantern to bring Amazing back to safety, but that was the second in him turret taken down here. And that was without the AD carry for Copenhagen Wolves. That, is just, it, that just shows how one side this game is really becoming right now. And even Jaywa, who, you know, we, we've kind of been harsh on him a little bit. He just doesn't do that much damage as we've seen him attacking Young Buck over and over. He really hasn't added in many damage items. He has the, Ma the Ma of Mamordius done, but that's about it. He has a little bit more magic resist to survive against the burst that Kowtard can put down, but he doesn't really offer anything in these fights. If he does offer one thing, though, that they need, he has to knock Kowtard up. Nurtzer has to follow up with another knockup as well, and a crescendo. They have to kill him right away. They have to kill him within that stun and before he can get that zone is off if they want to be, to be able to have a chance in these fights. Yeah, CC is so important here to locking down Kowtard, who's now the fact that he becomes intargetable and also as a zone as well makes it 
a little bit harder to do. And frustrating. Uh, and, and very frustrating to do as well, indeed. Uh, we are going to be seeing Dragon is available now. We don't really need to talk about that one. But Baron, as we see the timer appear, is going to be back in just two minutes' time. So putting on Wolves already starting to uh, get themselves ready for that one, making sure that they've got full vision control of this top side of the jungle. Jarvan actually recalling here. Kautard, is he going to check it? Nope. Which is fine, actually, because they're going to get a tower for it. And right now, I'm curious, are they going to go for another Baron? It's limited getting caught right there a little bit, but does flash out of it. And now Company Wolves going for JWoww. Yeah, and look at that. Half of his health just gone from that one. Now they finally have Forgiven in there as well. So they've got that AD carry to hammer away on the turret. That will be finished off. Kautar managing to zone the Jarvan out here, which... It, it just shouldn't be at that stage. It shouldn't. Uh, well, obviously, it is at that stage now. But if you want to have a chance of winning, you have to be able to bully and it's, Kautard back it's with funny a Javan. Because Narutador, he kind of fed Kautard a little bit, ganking bottom two times, having uh, Youngbuck come in and turn that one around. And right now, Youngbuck does have his ultimate available. If they get this inhibitor, the game will most likely be over for the Copenhagen Wolves as Baron will be up in just a minute here as Narutador trying to chase Kautard away. But look at the damage he even does to him. Yeah, he's down to less than half HP. There is Stan United. Zonya's gonna get used. They're all diving in on top of this one. There's Crescendo did come in from the back there. Youngbuck managing to taunt two of them up. There's unlimited hammers away there. They will actually lose Amazing in as well. A Youngbuck all alone here is gonna try and wow does take down. I said try. He didn't really need to try. Just gets in there with a taunt. He's gonna fall after. And that is a four for two in the end in favor of TSM, uh, TCM, sorry. I knew I was gonna do that uh, with all the T TSM news recently. Sorry, TCM. Uh, that was an amazing fight from them. That's what happens when Kautar dies. 15 seconds to Baron, like, they could go for it if all their lanes weren't so heavily pushed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you saw Kautar right there. He went in, he zoned his, they got the Shen ultimate onto him. I believe the shield might have even worn off right at the end. But then you had the full burst combo come out of Belgian Beast, was able to take him down and with him gone, there goes their 10 kills. I mean, Joe, we always talk about kill distribution. Look where all the kills are for, for right now, Copenhagen Wolves. 10 on uh, Kautard, you have four on Youngbug, four on Amazing, but the AD carry has nothing. Uh, support doesn't even have that many assists at this point, who even got Merc Treads and a Giant's Belt just to be a little bit more tanky. And once you kill that one guy that has all the kills, they have nothing else to support that. Well, you say that, but forgiven. He's got zero kills, but look at his items. Like, he's there at this point. Infinity Edge, Bloodthirster, Phantom Dancer, Last Whisper, he's going to be able to sell that Doran's Blade a little bit later on uh, as well. But Baron is going to be the important point here. And we can see that Copenhagen Wolves actually going for it. Barney D, he's going to get hooked. He's not escaping that one. Amazing picks up that kill. Easy. And they had so much time to ward that too, as you mentioned before. Um, they obviously did just get up, you know, not too long ago as is dead again here. But Copenhagen Wolves... Don't have an Oracle on them, oh. so they can't actually catch him out, but Narutador getting caught. Yeah, caught, and he's dead as well from this one. Not much he could do apart from put the Cataclysm down and just hope that that's going to keep him away from Baron long enough to, well, I'd say uh, as though that actually had a thought process behind it. Probably didn't at all. Just throw the ultimate out there at the end, why not? Baron goes <laughs> over to Copenhagen Wolves, second one of the game. And now TCM really have their back to the walls. Yeah, even with that last fight that they did win, it just wasn't enough to give them what they needed. Especially when you have your support, which you need that crescendo out of, dies from getting caught just a little bit right there. But now, middle inhibitor still down. The bottom one has respawned here, and they're going to hit this top one, which with that Lich Bane, look how quickly it's going to go down. Yeah, like three hits from Kautard. That goes down pretty quickly, and the inhibitor's going to follow. They did push out the bottom and mid lanes, though, so they wanted to make sure that when Copenhagen Wolves inevitably come towards this top side, that they're not going to have super minions to help them push on towards the Nexus turrets. The inhibitor that spawned in this bottom side, not going to last very long, I'm afraid. And that will be picked off. Copenhagen Wolves now have all three inhibs down. And this mid one will come up fairly shortly, but I'm not sure it's going to be quick enough to actually save TCM at this point. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves are playing this very smart now, considering what happened in that last fight. They're going to let all these lanes collapse on top of them with all those waves of super minions coming in. Then they're going to look for a fight or maybe just take those turrets down. And right now, Harney D, he's got he's to come up big. He's got to come up with a perfect crescendo on Kowtart if they want to have a chance to win this fight. I think he's going to have to crescendo all five of them, actually, if they're, if they're really to win this one with that Baron buff on them as well. They can't afford to lose that support player early on. Copenhagen Wolves here, just making sure that everything's pushing up, trying to find that first pick as a hook goes through from Unlimited. Not quite catching on to JWoww. 
And it's Youngbok who can really start things off. He's now got that fro frozen heart added in as he does flash in there, does get the taunt down. Unlimited was Crescendo, but they've managed to pick off Sona. That's not the Crescendo they were looking for. Kautard is ripping them to pieces as well. JWoww gonna get his blood well up, but instantly hooked after that. There's the shutdown. Matroko flashes away, but Kautard's chasing him. He's surely not gonna go onto the fountain. We see Amazing on Belgian Beast right now. He will repel up there. Youngbok is actually pretty low. They go in, there's a cocoon lands, and that is going to be a dead Belgian beast as well. Matroko now the only one to save the Nexus, but that's five men still alive here for the Copenhagen Wolves, able to get in and finish off the game. They're going to go through into the semi-final best of three. Fantastic game, 40-minute game there. TCM, as you said, they started off really, really yeah. well in that one, getting Matroko X, sorry, getting Naruto down there onto that bottom lane and really getting things going, but he just just fell away from them. I really wonder what would have happened if Belgian Beast got those two kills instead against the Fizz. I mean, obviously, um, you know, we were saying TCM did have a huge advantage early on, but then Copenhagen Wolves taking advantage of their aggression, taking advantage of Naruto-Dor constantly ganking bottom lane, using Young Buck to come in there and turn the fights around, really gave them a huge edge. I mean, you saw Kaltard pick up, I think it was 3-2-1 and one at some point in the game after being 0-2-0 uh, and zero, uh, with those two fights at Dragon, and they were able to turn that one completely around on the back of Kaltard. And as I was saying before, Forgiven, didn't have a lot of kills, wasn't too flashy, but had 13 assists, had the farm he needed, and did the damage that he really needed on top of that. Yeah, he had no kill. Well, he had one. He had one at, uh, the, at okay. the end. He had very one end. right at the very end. But he had all the items. He had 300, I think, 50 CS when we were really talking about him not having any kills at that stage of things. So strong performance. And honestly, that yeah, that game didn't go the way I expected. I expected Copenhagen Wolves, you know, the fact that they had that roster change. Maybe mm -hmm. the, the early game, the laning phase will be their strength. And right. they might fall off later on when the team fight's coming. But it was actually the other way around as how that one happened. So a little bit confusing on that front of things. Either way, they've won the game. Let's have a look at the brackets here. And we've got some little updates coming through from those, uh, those games already. <laughs> uh, SK Gaming managed to take down Alzen, the Polish side. And I think that one was uh, kind of expected, as probably was the bottom side of the bracket here. Meet your makers moving through to the semi-final against, uh, after picking up that win against Avalanche Supreme, they will, of course, be taking on the Copenhagen Wolves, which means we're going to have Meet Your Makers versus Copenhagen Wolves, and we're going to have SK Gaming versus, versus Millenn either Millennium or H2K. I'm just going to check the admin channel. Well, all I can say right now, Joe, is there's going to be a lot of good games coming up. I mean, we're only going to be able to do one Oops. of the... <laughs> do one of the uh, the semifinal. <laughs> Actually, no, we do. Yeah, only one of the semifinals. Yeah. But I don't know which one we should do. There's, they're, they're both going to be extremely good games. And I mean, obviously, people want to see SK. They want to see the new roster. I personally want to see Meet Your Makers just to see how their lineup has been working out. If they fixed any problems, I don't even know who to watch. I know what we're gonna do. do I've, the I've taken this decision. We're gonna go to the other side of the bracket. Because I think that's fair, just to switch. I keep kicking this light below us here. There's like discos going on below. Um, <laughs> discos going on below. Yeah. Uh, SK Gaming versus Millennium or H2K. That's the game we're going to do. Uh, if you want to watch the other game, by the way, ESL TV Poland are broadcasting those games, obviously, in Polish. So if you're up to scratch with Polish and no more than just that one word, then you can go over there and watch that one. I mean, they've got Meet Your Makers as well. It makes sense for the Polish audience as well. I'm just thinking about the big picture here, mm -hmm. which means we're going to see SK's new roster. Uh, I'm just going to ask uh, Millennium H2K. Yeah, finished. Our admin is on the ball. He's always on the ball, is Dave. We'll see what he can uh, figure out from that one. Um, but that will obviously be against SK Gaming here. It's going to be a best of three. Mm -hmm. So if you if you follow in from earlier from what I said, the winners of the best of three games will qualify for the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne, which means the winner of this next semifinal will be all qualified for that tournament. That's what we're here for tonight. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, they'll be joining NIP already in the amateur tournament. $30,000 prize pool on top of that. And the chance to play some, uh, you know, against who they're gonna be playing against coming up in the next couple of months for the promotion tournament. So, Joe, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Uh, just some information: SK and Meet Your Makers actually won by a walkover uh, because Alzen ah. and Ava weren't able to start their match uh, half an hour after mm. the scheduled start mm -hmm. time. They don't get kicked out of the tournament. They get obviously it's a walkover victory. They go down to lower bracket. So hopefully they're able to start these games on time <laughs> and still have a chance down on the lower side of things. But guys, we're going to be taking a quick break. When we come back, we're going to go into SK Gaming versus the winner of Millennium and H2K. So don't go anywhere. 